dealing with domestic violence. They have a nine-year-old son named Jason. I decided that it would not be safe for us if we were there when David got home. So I took Jason and went to stay with a friend. The next day, I got a 209A restraining order that ordered David to leave the house, not to abuse me, not to contact me, and to stay 100 yards away from me, the house, and my job. The restraining order gave me custody of Jason. Two weeks later, after the restraining order had been extended for a year, David served me with divorce papers asking for custody of Jason. I don't think it would be good for Jason to have David have custody. But Jason misses his dad a lot. Because David is so angry and unpredictable, I think visitation should be supervised. I am worried about David's drinking and what David will say to Jason when they are alone. I don't think that something so formal as a supervised visitation center is needed. I think Jason needs to be able to spend more time with David than a supervised visitation center could provide. I do have a very good relationship with David's mother, Sheila, and so does Jason. I talked to Sheila about a supervised visitation schedule, and Sheila was very agreeable. In Julie's situation, there's domestic violence, parents are getting divorced, the survivor wants the abusive parent to have visitation, she needs the visits to be supervised, but she does not need or want to use a supervised visitation center. To ask for a visitation supervised by David's mother, Julie could file a motion for supervised visitation by an individual, an affidavit in support of motion for supervised visitation, and defendant's proposed order for supervised visitation. If you want to ask for visitation supervised by an individual in an ongoing case, you can file a motion, an affidavit in support of the motion for supervised visitation, and a proposed order for visitation supervised by an individual. <music>